Is it not peanuts? Sir, so, uh, it ultimately, uh, the thing is that we don't have a you know, like, uh, global court of justice or something. Suppose I was the dad and China was making it, I would have asked it to do so. But China, apart from having that money, 100 billion dollars ability to pay, it also has considerable political clouds. So whatever we can achieve, we can achieve only through consensus. And uh, the moral stance and the moral brainwash that you have to pay, these things won't work anyway. Thank you. I call upon Mr. Ananya Jha from Team A to speak again for motion. Everyone, uh, the developing nations on the 14th of December 2009 say, if you are not willing to play in our sandbox, we will not play in yours. Now why are the developing nations raising a voice on such a global platform? The Kyoto Protocol is a mechanism for legally binding emission reduction by the global north and for channeling funds to the south. Ever since the emergence of the Kyoto Protocol, the developed nations are making all sincere efforts to kill off the deal. America, which is the second largest contributor of carbon dioxide, did not even consider it necessary to ratify the protocol. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be surprised to note that China, the largest emitter of carbon dioxide, stands with the G77 nations and is protesting the stance of the developed nations. Now there are two tracks of negotiations that are underway at Copenhagen. A new series of commitments under the Kyoto Protocol for all rich countries and long-term action covering the US and the emerging wealthier nations. Now what do we as developing nations need? We need that the Kyoto Protocol should stay as it serves as a legal reminder to the developed nations of their global responsibility. On the contrary, what do the developed nations want? They want the scrapping of the Kyoto Protocol and the emergence of a single document from Copenhagen Talks which provides for lower emission cut obligations and vague language on future climate financing. To compound the whole problem, the Danish chair of UN meeting and the future European Union Commissioner on Climate, Connie Hedegaard, held a closed door meeting with 48 environment ministers from different nations, which is not a part of the UN process, to discuss mitigation targets and fast track funding. Now, on the pretext of regional representation, Costa Rica and Mexico were involved. But as all of us know, they are the more pliant members of the developing nation camp. Now to take my point further, the third world countries, and a major part of them are in Africa, have agreed that they will cut the aid that they, that they receive from developing, developed nations in order to reach a constructive conclusion so that there is emission cut by developed nations. Now my worthy opponents, tell me, are we, the emerging nations responsible, for the derailment of the talks or are the developed nations here who are the culprits? Also, look at the misery of the whole event. The United Nations Environment Minister, Ed Mulvern, went on to say that it would be irresponsible for the climate to not include the US in any final deal. Also, the developed nations are asking for a time deadline as to when the developing nations will start cutting their emissions. Mind you, the, develop, the developing nations the emission of these nations is quite less as compared to the developed nations. To end, I would just end on an, an, an analogous note which, said, which, which is basically that the situation is similar to a profound scholar of economics asking a first grade student as to when and by what day he would commit himself to the task of reaching the same profundity of knowledge whereas the simple truth of life is that the scholar himself does not know the answer to that question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your speech. Uh, my question is very simple. US did not sign the Kyoto Protocol when it was uh, brought to the house. So basically US believes in a policy which says that if you are now according to the Copenhagen Summit placing a, a, a legal amount, a legal binding to be paid in order if you do not go with the environmental concerns, why is that only for the developing or uh, developed countries where in fact today's greatest polluter 
is China. And China is a developing country. It does not have to face any kind of legal caps according to the Copenhagen Summit 12 because it's a developing country. So don't you think the US is justified in its stance as to why only us? Why should only we be forced to pay? No, as I've already said, China is a part of the motion with G77 nations for further negotiations on, G on the Kyoto Protocol and the formation of a new document. Having said that, having said that, I'll just state a few facts. What the developing nations, China, India, Brazil, and all the other member nations of G77 wanted, that 40 to 45 percent of cuts should be there in emissions, whereas the developed nations that you're quoting are saying that no, 20 to 30 percent, and that too not even legally binding. And if you take 20 to 30 percent also into consideration, the global temperature rise will be 3 degrees Celsius by 2050, which is more than the crucial tipping point of 2 degrees Celsius. Does that answer your question? Good afternoon, Arunai. Uh, you haven't touched upon the core issue as to why exactly in the first place G77 and AUSIS actually uh, wanted to backtrack from the entire negotiations being held in Copenhagen. With regards to the one degree, one Africa proposition and as well as the two degree norm which was set by the West and not accepted by the, Af by the African nations, G77 in particular, could you please comment on that? No, I've already told you that uh, the 3 degree rise in temperature would be there by 2050 if they do not agree to the top and the demands of the G77 nation of 40 to 45 percent cut. Now this is all mathematical. We can, do this, we can sit here and do the calculations. What I'm saying is that if they go by the 20 to 30 percent cut, 3 degree rise in temperature greater than the global tipping point. And again, I mean, what further should I just comment on that? Any reputations from the judges? Thank you, Alana. Thank you so much. Thank you as the spokesman for the developing countries. What is your justification for this debate in this hall, which is adding on to global warming? Should the developing countries not take this debate out? So I would personally.